We go now to the University of Michigan professor Betsy Stevenson, who previously served as the Department of Labor's chief economist under former President Obama. Good morning to you, Betsy. Good to have you on the program. Um, I, I want to get straight to it. Uh, last week, one of the top Fed officials, Loretta Mester, said inflation has not yet peaked. How much worse will it get in your view? Well, I, you know, I think it's hard to know how much worse it will get because what people really care a lot about is like energy prices where things are really volatile. I think the thing that economists are really worried about is when we strip out uh, those volatile food and energy prices and we look underneath uh, that core inflation and that's the stuff that's hard to bring down. And when that hit, you know, 6.6%, I mean, I think that uh, you know, made people very worried about how long that will last. And, you know, some of that's because we're going to see housing prices, uh, rental prices continue to go up because a lot of the values of the homes that are already out there are up and that hasn't filtered through into to CPI. And then there are people out there who really their wages are so far below in real terms where they were that they're clamoring for a raise. And, and I think that those are the folks who aren't ready to to say, you know, uh, I'm going to keep working at my current nominal wage. So I think that's the kind of risk that we're facing right now is we're going to see these increased wage pressure um, that's mm -hmm. going to keep pushing pushing prices up. I don't think we have to worry, though, that it's going to go much above where it currently is, which is that sort of 6.6% as the core underlying inflation. we got to be worried yeah. that it's stuck there. Well, there are plenty of people worried based on our CBS News polling. 70% uh, of voters believe the national economy is bad. 53% say their personal financial situation is good. So there's that. But a large part of the economy is consumer psychology here and what the consumer actually does. And the perception is not that the economy is strong as hell, as the president said, but that these pricing pressures are hurting. You know, it's such a weird time because we have a record number of job opportunities out there. I mean, it is a great time to look for a new job, to take a new job. And the people who are doing that are getting very large wage increases and are being made better off. And hiring is just continuing, uh, you know, at this really high rate. So if you're thinking about finding work, changing jobs, better using your skills, it's a great economy. If you just want to stay where you're at and yeah. keep buying the stuff you were buying, you're struggling because you're seeing food prices are up. You're seeing medical costs going up. Everything around you is going up a little bit. And if your boss doesn't want to give you a raise, you can't, you know, you can't make ends meet. Well, one of the areas that I know um, you focused on and we want to talk about is the child care and caregiver shortage. That's one area of the economy where um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics says there are 100,000 fewer child care workers now than there were before the pandemic. Where did they yes, go? What, what is going on? Okay, well, um, one thing is that we are missing a lot of foreign born women. I mean, and so that makes us confront the reality, which is uh, immigrant women provide a lot of childcare in this economy and they left. Um, so we just have fewer uh, immigrant women. So that's a direct answer to your question of where did people go? I think what's making everybody really feel the pinch is, you know, the labor supply of parents, parents, you know, the share of parents who are in the labor force, both mothers and fathers, has returned to where it was pre-pandemic. But as you just said, we're missing childcare workers. So no wonder parents feel like they're struggling because now they're trying to do it with less formal care. Um, and I think that, you know, that is causing a lot of stress. And there, that that problem is getting worse because look, the median wage of a childcare worker is still $12 an hour. Mm -hmm. So you can do better going to McDonald's, Starbucks, Target. There's a lot of jobs out there that's gonna pay you more than $12 an hour. And that's making it harder to hire childcare workers. It's why in the last job month report, we saw a decline in the number of childcare workers when other things are, are continuing to grow. But if we pay childcare workers more, yeah. well, where's that gonna come from? That's gonna mean increasing the price of childcare services. And now we get back to inflation. Well, and so, you know, the real, yeah, go no, ahead, Margaret. I, and we also have teacher shortages around the country. I mean, what are you seeing in terms of uh, female employment and the return to the workforce? Isn't that still a big problem? You know, actually prime age women are back. So that's our 25 to 54 year old. Uh, so they're, you know, not, it, we, we sort of focus on that age because 
they're not in school, they're not retired. Um, that age group is back. The problem we had, you know, with teachers, with airline pilots, with a lot of jobs is that people retired early. So we're missing our sort of most skilled older workers and that's causing some problems. And then on the other end, we didn't train a lot of people in jobs during the pandemic. We didn't have those student teachers in the classroom in 2020 and 2021. And so we are not training young ones. The older ones are retiring early. And then all the burden is falling on these, you know, sort of middle aged uh, teachers, pilots, all sorts of jobs like that. And it's, you know, making the job worse, which is putting mm -hmm. again, sort of upward, you know, wage pressure, which is leading to inflation. You know, the thing is people are very upset about inflation and they feel awful about it. But the reality is that inflation hurts some people more than others. Yes. It's not, it's a generalized increase in prices, but not all prices are, you know, raising the same amount. So we've got childcare workers where the price of childcare hasn't gone up to keep up with inflation. And so that's hurting people in the childcare industry. And the result is we have fewer people working in childcare. But we got parents on the other hand who can't really afford to pay more for childcare because they couldn't afford to pay for mm -hmm. childcare before we had inflation. And that brings us back to needing a government solution to help ensure that all families can afford high quality childcare. And that's why the next Congress is going to matter so much. And Betsy, thank you so much for talking to us.